He said, that's what I want to do, but there's one thing I require, the tithes and the offerings. See? And then I will do this for you, he said. Now, but isn't the tithe part of the law? Yes, it is. But remember also this, the tithe predates the law. Abraham tithed in Genesis 14. Isaac tithed. Jacob tithed. Joseph tithed. And so on down the line, they tithed. And this was, Abraham was 430 years before the law. Now the law included it in the tithe. I'm uh, sorry, included the tithe in the law. You know why? Because God, even in the law, God wants to bless his people. And so it was legislated, you must tithe. But in the New Testament, it is no longer legislated. Because God doesn't want you to do it because you're scared he might curse you. God will not curse you. Let's get that straight, okay? God will never curse you. He already cursed Christ. In other words, all the curses were made big on Christ. Walana, walana natira. There is no curse left for you, but the money still contains a curse. See? And you bring that. And when that is not set apart, you bring that curse. It's not that bad things will happen to you, but you know what? That hundred percent, well, put it this way. That hundred percent you will find out will never be enough. You might say, well, pastor, you know what? I can't afford to tithe. Let me tell you, you can't afford not to tithe. See, you may have a hundred percent, but you know what's gonna happen? Uh, somebody gets sick. So now you have to buy medicines. Car breaks down all of a sudden. Might be just a little inconvenience, a flat tire. Costs you only a hundred bucks, but that's still a hundred bucks. Then all of a sudden you hear a funny sound in the car. You know, and then, then something needs to, and then the ref starts to make a different sound. The aircon starts to make a different sound. And then somebody starts coughing and you know, all these things. He says, I will rebuke the devourer. These are things that, you know, just siphon money. It devours. See, the context is money. <coughs> the context here is money. He says, I will devour. I mean, uh, I will rebuke the devourer. See, that's what he said. That's what I'm going to do. I'll rebuke the devourer. So you'll find out your 90% actually goes farther than the 100%. See? And the time actually allows God to block off all of these financial attacks, all of these financial devourers. That's why the Bible says to bring all the time into the storehouse. By the way, one more thing. The Bible says storehouse, not storehouses. Don't chop chop your time. Say, I want to give a little here, you know, 2% here, 2% that church, 2% to another church. No, it says storehouse. That's the place where you are fed. That's the place where you get your feeding, where you fellowship with the saints. You know, I need to preach on fellowshipping once in a while. Some people say, you know, it's just me and God. I don't need to go to church anymore. You know, the church is overrated. I, I beg to disagree, and quite strongly on that, okay? Now, when we don't tithe, the Bible calls us robbers. God, rather. Not just, but God calls us robbers. He says, you have robbed me. Why? Because we are taking and using for ourselves that which belongs to God. See? Now, does He still love us? Yes. He still loves you. Even if you choose to rob Him, He will still love you. And His grace will still be on you. But your finances, you're not going to be able to enter into that hundredfold, sik sik lig lig, you know, press down, shaking together, running over, until there is no more room to contain. You will never be able to see that. Why? Because you are robbing God. And the devourer has an excuse. See, God will not send the devourer. Our robbing invites the devourer. We ourselves invite the devourer when we choose not to tithe. But remember this, God doesn't say, oh, I better tithe because I'm mahirap na. You know? No, 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 don't tithe because you're getting scared. If you're getting scared, it's working. Uh, that's, not, that's not my intention, I'm serious. You, you don't tithe by force. God still wants you to be cheerful, see? 
Because when you tithe by force, when you tithe grudgingly or necessity, you know, because pastor will get mad and, or whatever, God will get mad, then you're putting yourself back under the law. See, even the tithe, he wants it to be out of joy. Now, how can I tithe in joy? How can I do it with joy? Knowing that God will bless you. See, that's the thing. A blessing is released every time you tithe, every time you give your offerings. Blessings are multiplied to you. You know why? Because it becomes an act of faith. You might say my 90% will not be enough. And perhaps you're right. You know why? Because you keep on saying it will not be enough. Instead of saying, praise God, I can set apart 10% so that whatever remains, God will multiply so that all my needs are met, all my bills are paid. See, that's what we need to say. You know why? Because God is good. Amen. And how often is He good? All the time. All the time. All the time, God is good. God, the principle of the tithe is this. Set apart God's part and He's going to bless what remains. That's the principle of the tithe. In other words, we are simply acknowledging, yes, Lord, everything comes from you. In fact, all 100% belongs to Him. But all He asks is 10. That's all He asks. 10%. Let that be mine. Because it is His. Give that part back to me. So, the principle of the tithe, for example, is like even coming to church. Coming to service. Sunday is the first day of the week. You set apart the first day. Guess what He'll do with the other six days? He's going to bless it. You know, some people are so worried, you know, they have to overtime, overtime, overtime. And even Sundays... Get you stuck with the overtime. And you know what? You are robbing from God. Because, see, when you set apart the first day of the week and say, I am giving this to God. I am going to worship. I am going to service. I am going to hear God's word. The other six days, He's going to bless them. So you can actually finish the same amount of work even without overtime. It's just the principle of setting apart the first part. Now, it's like, for example, psychologists, they um, basically agree that we use up about only 10% of our brain. Geniuses use anywhere from 12 to 14% of their brain's capacity. Now, if you give a tithe of your brain, I mean, don't have neurosurgery and say, uh, Pastor, this is my offering, you know. Uh, not that. But if you set apart 10% of your brain, which is about everything that you're using. What does it mean to set it apart? Take the time to read the Word. Take the time to meditate on the Word. To worship. To memorize. To feed on the Word. Take the time. You know what He's going to do? He's going to increase your brain capacity. You know, modesty aside, when I was in grade school, I took an IQ test. My IQ was about 80. Average. Average. I didn't like it, but that was the score, 80. So I guess I'm average. And I said, no, I'm going to improve on that. I'm going to make that go up. And uh, high school, I took another test, and it was about, I don't know, 90 something, 95, 97. So it improved. So now it's slightly above average. So there's an improvement. Slightly above average. And I said, no, that's not good enough. I want it to go up some more. I got into college.